the WHO for their fear-mongering about e-cigarettes. Yes, they've jumped on the bandwagon. And yes, again, they're trying the secondhand smoke angle. Or is it secondhand vapors? I guess it's kind of hard to scare people when you put it like that. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm completely nuts. But I feel like if the people who did e-cigarettes actually paid, you know, put their little lobby and money and everything else to serve Congress people, well, I guarantee you this stuff will go away. No, there, there's too many social engineers out there. I mean, the tobacco company's a huge lobby, and they can't stop them. Yeah, it's just, I, I think that people are so uh, terrified. Oh, my God, these cigarettes are going to kill you, but it hasn't killed you. And what they say, and you got to listen to what they say, you know, read it really closely to see the problems. For example, quote, The fact that ENDS exhaled aerosol contains, on average, lower levels of toxicants than the emissions from combusted tobacco does not mean that these levels are acceptable to involuntarily exposed bystanders. Okay, now, note the phrase, on average lower levels. While that's technically correct, what picture does that paint for you that they're like slightly lower but might occasionally rise above that level? Is that what it sounds like to you? Yeah, it's this uh, it's manipulating words. And yeah. The fact is, emissions from e-cigs are less than 1% of those of normal tobacco cigarettes. Yeah, and uh, I read this article. It's not even close. They don't even have that. No. All on this whole thing. They don't have scientific facts. It's not a single scientific fact quoted or cited. And this is supposedly the World Health Organization. A, a supposedly we have a lot of think tanks, a lot of people who are smart and scientists there. They're a political group. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, and I mean, they even flat out lied and said that manufacturers shouldn't promote e-cigs as smoking secession aids, despite the fact that there's already ample evidence that they're more effective than any other product on the market for that purpose. Uh, and they say, quote, Although anecdotal reports indicate that an undetermined proportion of ENDS users have quit smoking using these products, their efficacy has not been systematically evaluated yet. Only a few studies have examined whether the use of ENDS is an effective method for quitting tobacco smoking. Yes, only a few studies have shown quite clearly that e-cigs are a great way to quit smoking. But they don't cite any studies the other way. Wow. It, it, that's amazing. That to me shows you that the, this, these uh, organizations say, "Oh, they all they have these agendas. They don't really care about truth or science or all this type of uh, that things that really matter. All they care about is just like they're just in a lobbying group, and you know they see a new interesting product and they want to just shut it down because these you know these people just don't want to have any fun. They don't want to have any fun." They just want to just make things as boring and bland as possible. Quote, E-cigarettes emit toxic chemicals which could be harmful to bystanders. Well, is it any more harmful than the chemicals emitted by cars as they drive by? Mm. Yeah, and yet, no one wants to say we have to ban uh, cars. Well, some people are. <laughs> yeah. But check this one out. Quote, we also don't know enough yet about the harms and side effects of electronic cigarettes, and it will take years before we can to be sure what they are. Okay, so we don't know that they're harmful, so ban them just in case. Yep, yeah, this that's, uh, that works every time. It, it, that doesn't cause a uh, you know black market or anything. I mean, it doesn't do anything at all. Meanwhile, you know, when you have to test and everything that happened, like oh, it was safe all along. I wonder if they're gonna recant this article. If it comes out that it is, and they're like, wow, we're safe the entire time. People around it, they don't get secondhand smoke or anything. Well, and even then, the effects of secondhand smoke have been overblown. Yeah. You know, the real science about it says it's not anywhere near the problem that all these others are making it out to be. And with these things, they're practically non-existent. Fear-mongering. It, yep. it works in so many levels. <laughs> but listen to this one. E-cigarettes should be banned indoors over fears that they can be as toxic to bystanders as normal cigarettes. Notice it doesn't say e-cigarettes should be banned indoors because of evidence they can be as toxic to bystanders as normal cigarettes. No, fears. That's what it's all about. Fears. Yeah. Fear, fear, fear. And this is how pe they sell people about this. And sadly, it works. When they realize when it really comes out that nothing's wrong, they don't apologize. They don't do anything. They say, well... We just wanted to make sure. 
That's all. We just want to make sure. We didn't want to hurt or anything else. We just want to make sure. That's that's their excuse, which is uh, complete and utter bogosity. Well, and to give you an idea of what level they're operating on, they even mentioned propylene glycol as one of the problem ingredients. Now, this has already been pretty much thoroughly debunked because you remember the food babe and all the stuff she was saying about Subway's bread? Yeah, she's uh, talking about propylene glycol as being an ingredient in beer and other food products. And it can lower the freezing point of water, which is why they use it. But then she says, you know, since it lowers the freezing point, that it's antifreeze. But of course, she's trying to make it sound like the antifreeze in your car and poison and everything like that. And it's basically, no, it's harmless. And it looks like the WHO has fallen for this hook, line, and sinker. The fact is, if you drank propylene glycol straight up, it wouldn't harm you. It's part of the Krebs cycle. Your body makes it and breaks it down all the time. So, I mean, this is food, babe, and anti-vaxxer level bogosity. You pick a scary sounding ingredient that no one knows what it is, and you do the whole dihydrogen monoxide thing with it. Yeah, it works. It always works. No one's really calling around on it. No one's saying, you know what? This is this is complete garbage. We have to make sure uh, we can't we don't be fooled by these hustlers and, and everything like that. But no, the people still fall for it. But that's what gets me, because you always have skeptics going after the anti-vaxxers and food babe and people like that when they do this. Why don't they go after the WHO? Why don't they go after government organizations that do this? Well, because I think they, I don't want to be a uh, conspiracy tinfoil hat on. I think it's because they were raised, you know, with TV shows, stuff like that. But well, government may be incompetent in some place, but in the end, they get the, they pick the right guy. They, they get the job done in the end, which sadly, in reality, they rarely get the guy in the end. Yeah, it's not like it is on Law and Order or 24 or any of those. Yeah, that's the sad part. People believe that. You know, I think until most people shake out of that, we're still going to see these things. We're still going to have people believe, oh, my God, this thing is going to kill us all. When in reality, it's not going to kill us all. You know, it's just it's chicken little all over again. Yeah. So they've sunk into the same quagmire as the anti-vaxxers and food, babe. And that's after buying into the cell phones cause brain cancer bogosity. In any decently run universe, this would make them a laughing stock. In reality, at the very least, it makes the WHO this week's biggest bogani member.